When scientists search the universe for planets that may harbor life, they are mainly looking for one key feature, water. As far as we know, water is absolutely necessary for life on Earth. If you don't know why water is the most important molecule for life, this video will fully explain all of the life-giving properties of water and how this simple molecule makes life possible. The fundamentals of water and hydrogen bonding are very important to the complex topics on the AP Biology test. So stick with us as we discover why water is such a special molecule. This video covers the first topic in the AP Biology curriculum, the structure of water and hydrogen bonding. We'll start by reviewing atoms and the different types of bonds they form. Then we'll see the role that electronegativity plays in forming atomic bonds. This will lead us into what causes polarity and the role it plays in nature. After the quiz, we'll take a look at hydrogen bonding and see why it is so important for life on Earth. Finally, we'll take a look at the few of the specific properties of water that help make our planet habitable. If you only need to review one of these topics, feel free to skip to the times outlined here. Let's get started. First, let's do a quick review of atoms and chemical bonds. The nucleus of an atom is made up of positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus is a quickly moving cloud of negatively charged electrons. Though protons and neutrons are retained by each atom, electrons can be shared or transferred between atoms. There are two main types of chemical bonds that can happen between atoms, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. This is an ionic bond. Here, one atom, such as sodium, donates an electron to another atom, such as chlorine. After the reaction, each atom is more stable because its outer electron valence shell is full. But because of the number of protons in the nucleus, these atoms are now electrically imbalanced. Thus, one atom carries a positive charge while the other carries a negative charge. By contrast, electrons are shared between atoms in a covalent bond. Water is a molecule made from covalent bonds. One oxygen atom shares electrons with two hydrogen atoms. Each atom brings different chemical and physical properties to the molecule, giving each collection of bonded atoms unique traits. The electrons are shared, not transferred, binding the atoms together. This allows the molecule to hold a specific shape and not separate into charged ions. However, just because the atoms are sharing electrons does not mean the atoms are sharing electrons evenly. All atoms have the property of electronegativity, an ability to attract electrons to orbit the nucleus. Different atoms can have either high or low electronegativity. For instance, this oxygen has a very high electronegativity, while hydrogen has lower electronegativity. When these two atoms are bonded together, the difference in electronegativity means that oxygen, the more electronegative atom, attracts the electrons more so than the hydrogen. This gives rise to different types of bonds between different atomic species. Atoms that are similar in electronegativity, such as these two chlorine atoms, share electrons equally and have a neutral electrical signature across the entire molecule. This is a nonpolar covalent bond. When a highly electronegative atom is paired with a slightly less electronegative atom, such as the case of hydrogen and chlorine, the electrons are just shared unequally. This creates a molecule with uneven overall charge. This polar covalent bond produces electrical poles, one more positive and one more negative. If two atoms have a highly mismatched electronegativity, the bond will be ionic. Instead of sharing electrons, one atom will steal the electrons while the other loses them. In a polar covalent bond, some electrons may occasionally orbit the less electronegative atom, but in an ionic bond, the electrons never return to the less electronegative atom. This results in individual ions instead of bonded molecules. Think about this. The movement of electrons between atoms or molecules can transfer a lot of energy. When two substances have a highly mismatched electronegativity, the transfer of electrons can be explosive. 
While we are talking about simple molecules here, biological organisms essentially use this phenomenon to harvest energy and power the processes they need to survive. Essentially, every living cell is a tiny chemist that is carrying out specific reactions that give off energy in order to power other reactions that need energy. Keep that in mind as we continue on our biological journey. Since H2O is a polar molecule that is liquid at room temperature, it has the ability to act as a solvent. A solvent is a liquid that can dissolve other substances and distribute them evenly. Let's take a look at how this works on the molecular level. The polarity of water molecules means that the oxygen side of the molecule carries a negative partial charge, while the hydrogen areas carry slightly positive charges. Ions, which dry up into crystallized salts, are very important to many cellular functions. Water molecules work to dissolve and diffuse ions by separating the positive and negative charges using their polar nature. The positive ions, such as this sodium ion from table salt, are attracted to the negative oxygen side of the water molecule. The chloride ions, carrying a negative charge, are surrounded by hydrogens that can carry a slightly positive charge. As each ion is surrounded, further interactions between water molecules carry ions further apart and evenly distribute them in the liquid. This gives water the ability to dissolve many substances in the body from nutrients to nitrogenous waste products created by protein deconstruction. Animals use water to flush these toxic chemicals out of their systems, distribute nutrients, and carry out important biochemical reactions. Now that we have covered the basics of atoms, electronegativity, and polarity, it's time for a pop quiz. I hope you weren't napping. Pause the video now and answer these questions. You can find answers to all the questions in this video through the quick test prep link in this video's description. The polarity of water creates the ability to act as a universal solvent through the phenomenon of hydrogen bonding. When two polar molecules meet, the positive end of one is attracted to the negative end of the second molecule. The opposite poles exhibit an attraction towards each other that is strong, though temporary. This attraction is a hydrogen bond. In a solution of water, each water molecule is constantly trying to form and break hydrogen bonds with other water molecules and polar substances. The ability to form hydrogen bonds with itself and other molecules makes water a great solvent and allows for many of the properties that are necessary for life. Two of the most important effects that arise from hydrogen bonding are adhesion and cohesion. Adhesion describes the ability of a substance to stick to other substances. Polar substances like water have a high adhesion to other polar molecules, such as the silicone molecules in this glass test tube. That's why water has a concave meniscus and seems to climb up the glass. Mercury, with almost no adhesive properties, forms a downward meniscus. Cohesion describes the ability of a substance to stick to itself. Both water and mercury have cohesive forces. The water is cohesive through polar interactions and hydrogen bonds, whereas mercury is cohesive due to nonpolar interactions between individual molecules. Let's see why cohesion and adhesion are so important to biology. In plants, for example, water is absorbed into the roots, but it is needed in the leaves. The properties of cohesion and adhesion aid in this process. Adhesion helps water molecules stick to the porous sides of the hollow plant tissue meant to transport water. At the same time, cohesion pulls other water molecules and nutrients into the stem. Together, this upward movement of water is known as capillary action. As water evaporates from the leaves, the entire system works like a straw to suck water out of the ground in a process known as transpiration. This is just one of many places in nature where water's adhesive and cohesive properties are required. Time for a break. Remember, 
You can't think or learn well if you are hungry, thirsty, or tired. So grab a snack, drink some water, and stretch your legs. That should give you the energy you need to finish up with this section. When we come back, we'll take a look at the last two specific properties of water that are important to biology. Hydrogen bonds between water molecules create a specific property known as surface tension. Surface tension is the ability of water molecules to stick together at the interface of the liquid and the air. Surface tension is how you can carefully balance a paperclip on the surface of water. High surface tension means that more energy is required to evaporate a liquid. A property called heat of vaporization. This is why it takes so much energy to turn water into vapor, while substances like alcohol or gasoline will quickly evaporate if exposed to the air. But individual organisms also manipulate surface tension. Animals that produce hydrophilic surfaces will tend to absorb more water as the surface tension of water is overcome with polar substances that attract that water. This might be important in a desert environment where water is scarce. Other organisms may want to spread their seeds, spores, or viral capsules by having them diffuse into water with a hydrophilic outer coat. By contrast, an organism that wants to stay separated from water can produce hydrophobic substances on its surface. This lotus leaf, for example, wants to direct water off of the leaf so it can float and obtain more sunlight. The hydrophobic surfaces repel the water causing surface tension and cohesion to pull the water into droplets. Small insects often have hydrophobic surfaces on their legs, allowing them to repel water and not break through the water surface. Hydrogen bonding between polar water molecules leads to one more important property. Water has a high specific heat, meaning it takes lots of energy to break the bonds between individual water molecules. Each water molecule can form up to three hydrogen bonds with neighboring molecules. Each hydrogen bond requires a bit of energy to form and a bit of energy to break. How many hydrogen bonds form and break at any given moment is determined by water's temperature. To measure the property of specific heat, we determine how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of a specific volume of water by one degree Celsius. Turns out, it takes quite a bit of energy because water is constantly forming and breaking hydrogen bonds. In order to heat water to a boil, the water molecules must be moving fast enough to break away from all the hydrogen bonds and the high surface tension. In nature, this property allows water to be a form of temperature control for the entire planet. As the sun shines, water absorbs much of this energy, ensuring that the planet doesn't overheat. At night, hydrogen bonds slowly release this heat energy and keep the average temperature stable. We just finished covering hydrogen bonding and the specific properties of water. Now, do you know why these properties are important to life on Earth? Pause the video and take this quiz to find out. You can find the answers to all these questions and a variety of other resources related to this topic in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and leave us any comments or questions you have about the structure of water, its properties, or hydrogen bonding. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary channel to find all of our AP Biology content and resources. Good luck!